in the United States of America. We will not intentionally separate children from their parents. We will not do that. We are better than that. We are so much better. We should be able to agree that we will not keep kids in child internment camps. In conclusion, Mr. Chairman, we need you. Those children need you. And I'm talking directly to my Republican colleagues. We need you to stand up to President Trump. That was top House Democrat Elijah Cummings getting emotional, blasting the Trump administration's zero tolerance crackdown on illegal immigration as his administration defends a policy that has resulted in thousands of children being separated from their parents. The president, who will huddle with House Republicans later today, tweeting, Democrats are the problem. They don't care about crime and want illegal immigrants, no matter how bad they may be, to pour into and infest our country like MS-13. They can't win on their terrible policies, so they view them as potential voters. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen says it's their job to enforce existing laws and that it's Congress's job to fix this. Here is the bottom line. DHS is no longer ignoring the law. We are enforcing the laws as they exist on the books. As long as illegal entry remains a criminal offense, DHS will not look the other way. This entire crisis, just to be clear, is not new. Uh, it's been occurring and expanded over many decades. But currently, it is the exclusive product of loopholes in our federal immigration laws that prevent illegal immigrant minors and family members from being detained and removed to their home countries. But California Senator Kamala Harris is among a growing number of Democrats calling for Secretary Nielsen to resign. Watch. I think that there is no question that that we are all seeing an incredible abuse that is taking place in terms of the separation of these children from their families. And the secretary has evidenced no compassion, much less commitment to correcting what is so obviously wrong about what is happening under her supposed leadership. In the meantime, Senator Ted Cruz introducing emergency legislation to keep families together. The Texas Republicans saying his bill would build temporary shelters where immigrant families could stay together. Double the number of federal immigration judges and speed handling of asylum applications. Chief Congressional Correspondent Mike Emanuel has more from Capitol Hill. Mike? Katie, nice to see you. Texas Senator Ted Cruz talked to us about this new legislation he is proposing designed to address this problem. We're horrified. This has to stop. I am this week introducing legislation, the Protect Kids and Parents Act, that will mandate that kids must stay with their parents, and it will also expedite the proceedings. One possible issue is this is the hot summer before November midterm elections, and there's a question about whether Democrats would vote for a bill offered by Ted Cruz. I hope so. I mean, I mean, you know, uh, I don't know if they'll take every word of Ted's bill, but I think he's got an idea that most Republicans would support. And Senator Feinstein, she's you know a good faith senator. We'll see if we can find some kind of compromise. Utah Senator Orrin Hatch is circulating a letter among his colleagues calling for a pause on family separations until Congress has time to pass a legislative solution to this issue. Hatch makes the case families should not have to suffer while Congress takes the time to get this done right. President Trump continues tweeting about immigration, writing, We must always arrest people coming into our country illegally. Of the 12,000 children, 10,000 are being sent by their parents on a very dangerous trip, and only 2,000 are with their parents, many of whom have tried to enter our country illegally on numerous occasions. Key Democrats don't appreciate the president and the White House blaming Congress. Well, that's just a load of crap. Uh, I mean, really, it's just wrong. I mean, give me a break. Everybody knows that. And, and, and this is not a time for lying, mendacity. It's a time for being honorable. And the president has the power with one phone call to end this terrible zero tolerance policy. And Mr. President, pick on somebody your own size. Stop picking on these toddlers and infants. All of this will likely be a very hot topic when President Trump travels up to Capitol Hill late today to meet with House Republicans to talk immigration. Katie? Mike, thank you very much. We appreciate it.
So, Pete, this is mm -hmm. a complicated mm -hmm. situation, to say the least. It's not black and white. Your thoughts? Yeah, it's, it's nearly impossible to have a rational conversation about this because of the level of hyperbole, mm -hmm. uh, especially coming from the left, because they haven't stood for anything. Now they see this as a golden opportunity to be for the kids and hammer the president as heartless, when in reality, this is a president who ran on strong immigration policies. The Hill won't give him a wall. You gotta stop the incentives to break the law. And if you wanna come as an asylum seeker, as they've said time and time again, go to a legal port of entry, declare asylum, and we'll determine what happens. And kids are not separated in that case. But if you're gonna try to skirt across the border illegally as an adult, they have learned through past information that makes its way down to Central America and Mexico that bringing a child is like bringing a shield. And until you end that incentive, you can't change the dynamic on the border where folks are flooding into our country and we don't know who they are. So it is on Congress mm -hmm. to figure it out. And right now our chief executive is saying a border matters and I'm going to enforce it. And then everyone yells about it. Kathy, your thoughts? Well, as, um, as a Latina, it's an issue that gets me really um, very emotional and hot. But uh, I would say that uh, immigration is actually at an all-time low. They're not flowing. People are not flowing uh, at all. Unaccompanied minors are flowing. There's but, been a 300 but, there's been But immigration at a net zero. But we are at a net zero in immigration right now. The numbers have never been lower. So uh, Mexico's, economy, Mexico's economy is doing better than ever. So people are not flowing into our country. We have 12 um, million Mexico, undocumented. I, I would just... But, but correct have, you to point out that they're coming from Honduras and they're coming from Guatemala. But they also so are going to Mexico's Mexico. Mexico's numbers are they lower. Could but they could get asylum. Right. Well, but, but they, they also are going to Mexico. Yes, but, but we are, uh, immigration is not the number one topic right now. It's not that um, major as it was 20, 30 years ago. We're not having a problem with immigrants. This is just distraction. This is just um, taking our eye off the ball. He so you would agree that Democrats he are using this as a distraction? I'm saying that a wall was promised and uh, Mexico is going to pay for it. It didn't happen, so now we are separating okay. families. See, actually, think, uh, let's get back to the issue at yeah. hand, which is this unaccompanied minor crisis. It, we've yeah. seen a 300% increase since last year of these unaccompanied minors, and some of them are family units coming into the country. And as you're seeing with the photos and the, yeah. the narrative now, it is a big issue. I think the photos are horrifying, and everyone on all sides is very upset. It's obviously very charged. When you hear Elijah Cummings crying and saying, have some compassion, I want to say you have some compassion and get back to work. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the laws that are on the books. And as you heard the Secretary of Homeland Security say, when the it undermines democracy when you have the body that makes the laws asking the body that enforces the laws not to enforce the laws they've written. So go back, get your pencil out, don't go home and don't go to bed until you've written something. They say, you know, when they say we need the time, we've got to put this on pause so we have the time to fix it. How long have they been working on immigration? Right. Get to work. This is horrible. And you're the ones with the power to end this crisis. But now. they don't want to. Get That's to work. the problem, but, Melissa. Yes. They do not want to because for political reasons, they would much rather cry on television like Elijah Cummings did. They would rather show, in some cases, fake photos, right? We've mm -hmm. seen some doctored right. photos of children behind mm -hmm. the so-called cages. cages. Um, yeah. But they would rather play this out on a very emotional level because you're appealing in, their, in the Democrats' mind to people's hearts, and nobody wants to see children separated from their parents. But uh, at the same time, um, it, it, it plays to any hatred they can gin up as we go into 18 mm -hmm. for Donald Trump. They don't have I mean, that's, to run on. That's the economy what, is gangbusters, so they've yeah. got to have some, they're sending the nightly newscast down to the border to report from there, like this is suddenly now an issue because it's happening under Donald Trump. live in the shadows, and we don't want them to. <laughs> this list that we just laid out yeah. isn't necessarily just about illegal immigration. It's about tightening up standards for becoming a legal immigrant in this country. I think the president is trying to put as much pressure as possible on Congress to act. And if you look at it through the lens, and I always do, I feel like the president has done deals his whole, whole entire life, and I'm always looking at it through that lens of his book and how he has laid out how he gets things done. When you have two sides who, for whatever reason, and both sides are guilty, every single politician who has touched government before this, by definition, hasn't solved this problem. So when you have two sides who, for whatever reason, aren't willing to come together to make a deal when both sides have issues that can be bartered so you can come to a solution. The only way to get it done is to put so much pressure on those parties that they have to get together and do a deal. And I, I, it may or may not be a good idea, 
But I do think that's what he's doing. Yeah, creating leverage. But I think fundamentally here, Democrats do not actually want to see Donald Trump be successful with immigration reform. And that is simply because mm -hmm. if you have 2 million people that suddenly have a shot at citizenship. 12 million? Probably well, they, they've talked DACA. about, you know, DACA. With two, DACA. I mean, then all of a sudden you have a group that's going to say, well, maybe I'll vote Republican next time. Maybe Donald Trump is exactly what the country needs. Maybe this is my chance at the future. And, and so the Democrats, they're counting on all of those people for votes. They don't want to give them away to Donald Trump, so they will not let him be successful. They do not fundamentally want him to succeed.